Okay, hi, this is Miss Lyndon, and this is still my wonderful period one class. Say hi. Hi. And we are still in chapter 12, molecular biology of the gene, and we are moving on to 12.2, replication of DNA. And when does that occur? During the S stage of interphase. Now, DNA replication is called semi-conservative. Semi-conservative, let me explain why. Your original strand of DNA, let's say in purple, that's our old strand. What happens is that DNA, be right here, be DNA with me. DNA is gonna unwind, unwind, you see how I did that? <laughs> okay, you're right here. Unwind, <laughs> so tricky, and unzip. <laughs> Okay, each of these old strands, and there's more to this song, each of these old strands serves as a template for, did I say old song? Oh, okay. <laughs> serves as a template for a new strand. So you can see here, here are the old strands in purple, new nucleotides are brought in, old with new, old with new. That's why it's called semi-conservative. If it were conservative replication, what would happen is the purples would unwind and unzip, serve as a template, and then they would disengage, and the two new green ones would get together, and the two old purple ones would get back together. That would be conservative replication. It's semi-conservative. You're conserving part of the old strand, and you're using that as a template to build your new strand. Okay, And that's what we're seeing right here as well. Okay, you can see the DNA is unwinding and then we're bringing in new nucleotides. Keep in mind, bringing in those new nucleotides is gonna require an enzyme and some of those strands are gonna be leading and some are gonna be what? Lagging. Okay, good. So let's take a look at, I don't remember which video this one is, but we will watch me. Watch me. We will watch me right now. <laughs> DNA replication is defined as the process by which an organism's original DNA is used as a template for the production of a new complementary DNA strand. An enzyme called helicase unwinds the original DNA's double helix, creating a replication fork. Next, an enzyme named DNA like polymerase 3 works down the leading strand and up the lagging strand of the replication fork, synthesizing two new strands of DNA by taking free nucleotides and pairing them with the complementary basis on the original DNA template. The process of DNA replication is described as semi-conservative because the two copies of DNA produced each contain one strand of the original DNA and one entirely new DNA strand. Yes. Um, where do all the free nucleotides come from? They are, if you're, they're in the cytoplasm, if you are a bacterial cell, but they're in the nucleus. We, when you eat food, you're eating cells, right? Yes. Whether they're plant or animals, they're your eating cells. You have enzymes that actually digest the genetic code um, and glycosylases, there's all they in, they digest your DNA as well of the food that you eat, and you will use those nucleotides in order to build your DNA in your cells. Yes. If like, is the food we eat, like let's say you eat an apple, uh huh, are there cells in that? This is AP, right? If the apple was just picked, that cell is alive, still getting nutrition. And if you really want to know what an apple is, you're actually eating an apple tree's ovary. Just thought I'd let you know that. Because the gametes are the seeds are the gametes. So when you have fruit salad, you're really having ovary salad for the most part. <laughs> that was awesome. Okay. Now, on that note, semi-conservative replication in your notes, here we go. Semi-conservative replication, that's your first word. Each daughter DNA double helix contains an old strand from the parental DNA double helix and a new strand. The old strand serves as a template for the new strand. The old sand strand serves as a template for the new strand.
Okay, I have several enzymes to teach you and I want you to get them down right away. This is a big ticket concept, how you get that genetic code replicated, replicated accurately. Because what happens if we screw it up? You screw up just one nucleotide, you can have some sort of mutation and that could that cause death? Absolutely. It may or may not, it depends on if it's part of a structural part of that chromosome or it's a coding or a non-coding region. But if it's a coding region, you get the wrong nucleotide, that's a big deal. So we're gonna learn that process. Remember when we, we learned the, um, the way DNA sits now, it's all super coiled, you remember that? How the DNA white wraps itself around um, the histone, non-histone, histone proteins, and then those form the nucleosomes, do you remember that part? And then that twists and twists. So there's an enzyme called topoisomerase who undoes all that twisting so you can even get at it. And so remember here we made our DNA, make your DNA right here, but I want you to super coil it up. Super, now bring it back in here. And you're gonna go topoisomerase. <laughs> all right. And then you're gonna go like this. You're gonna unwind and unzip. And you go like this. You know how we're gonna remember that? Because we look like an H right now. Yes. See how we look like an H? So a little bit. Did you see that before I even said it? Okay, so be here, be all twisted up. And what's gonna undo this? Topoisomerase. Look, I, topoisomerase. And then you're gonna unwind and unzip. Now, one of your strands is gonna be leading and one of your strands is gonna be lagging, okay? One's a leading and one's a lagging strand. So if you take a look up here, Okay, it says region of replication. In eukaryotic chromosomes, we start the replication process all over the place on all of our different chromosomes. And the parental DNA is unwound and unzipped. You just saw it, topoisomerase and what? Helicase. And new nucleotides are paired with those. Now, there is um, the first thing that I, I'm gonna add on there that's not shown, but it, you'll see the next one. You have to get the party started, okay? And you have to use RNA primase to lay down primer. RNA primase lays down primer. Say it. RNA primase lays down primer. Now, off of the primer is what DNA polymerase 3 can use. And DNA polymerase 3 is going to replicate more DNA for us. It's called DNA polymerase 3 because it reads off the 3 prime in. Okay? So, now, what's holding the strands together? Hydrogen bonds. So helicase unwinds and unzips. They just want to go, okay? They're going to want to go right back together because hydrogen bonds is what holds them together. So there are little markers that keep them apart so that they don't come back, and that's called SSB. It's like this, SSB, SSB, okay? So much to remember, that's why I try to give a little song to help you. So let's go from the beginning, ready? Topo isomerase. And we unwind, do it with me, and unzip, helicase. Okay, and then you gotta go like this, SSB, SSB. So we unwind and unzip, and we wanna keep them apart. Then um, we have RNA primer lays down, uh, um, RNA primase lays down our primer. So we're gonna go like this, we're gonna go primer. primer. And this is gonna be on our leading strand because our leading strand, we only have to lay it down once. And on the other side, we have to keep laying down primer because we have to keep turning around and working backwards because it is the what strand? Lagging. So we go primer, primer, primer. primer. So we go primer, 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 primer. You have to keep laying primer down for it to work off of. And the best way I can explain that is if this row right here could kind of turn their bodies the other direction, okay? And everybody watch, and they're gonna turn their bodies the other direction. If I am an enzyme, this is my leading strand. I can go right up against and lay down my nucleotide, no problem. I can work my way down this strand. But if I'm on the lagging, and I have a little primer to get the party started, but when I'm on this side, hold your hands up, it's like, See, our hands are not going the right way. We cannot make the flat motion. So I have to go down here and turn around and work my way backwards. And I have to go down here and turn around 
and work my way backwards. So I have to rep replicate in these shorter segments. Now these shorter segments are 1,000 to 2,000 base pairs long, but it's still over here, I could go all day. <laughs> okay, because they're all facing the same way, but this one I can't. So I have to keep turning around in order to replicate this DNA. So take a look here. You'll see where I say DNA polymerase three is the one that actually pairs those nucleotides on. Now, once you, and I'm gonna show you more pictures. I'm just trying not to freak you out, but I'll walk you through this about a million times. But you remember how I told you how you kept laying down pr um, the primer, the primase, ACE? Remember ASE always means a what? <laughs> Enzyme. Lays down primer. You can't have that, it, it's an RNA that you're laying down there, nucleotides. We can't have RNA in the middle of our DNA. So we have to clean the RNA out. We have to remove the primer off this side. And the multiple primers over here, we have to remove those out. So what you do is you have another enzyme called DNA polymerase 1. He is the one to save us. And he will remove the primers and replace it. Instead of having RNA there, he will have DNA. Now you have sections that are not connected because they weren't the original cruise down the end. So you use ligase to seal the phosphate sugar backbone. Okay, so that's where the ligase comes in. Now, I just taught you all of that, but I'm gonna break it down in sections. I just wanted you to see the whole picture as we approach. So take a look at this picture right here. So here's our DNA. So here's five, three, and what? Three to five. So one of these is, this is called the replication fork because this is where we're doing what? Helicase, Helicase and what? SSB, okay? We're separating, one is the five prime end and one is the three. Which one is the leading strand? The three prime end. So what happens is as it separates, we can get going, yay, and we can read this three to five and we can make complementary all, all the way through. But on this side, it's going the wrong direction, so we have to work off this, and then as we go back farther, we'll work a little bit more. So one strand is replicated slower, that is on the lagging strand. Young, oldest bio buddy, explain this picture right here. Go ahead, oldest bio buddy. <laughs> Primer. Use primase to put down primers. Yes. As the topoisomerase is undoing the supercoiling, helicase is working its way in there. And I'm going to show you some pictures of that, but if I jumped right to it, it'd freak you out. Yes. So is the DNA polymerase 3 the one that makes the base pairs? So practically that's the Not make the base pairs, but actually brings in the it free nucleotides. Okay. Yes. Yeah, and DNA polymerase 1 is used less because you're just replacing the, the primer that was laid down. Okay? Now... If you think of the thumbs as primer, the primer has to be laid down one time, one time on the leading strand, but multiple thumbs on the lagging. And so we have to get these thumbs out of here and replace it with DNA. That's gonna be DNA polymerase one. He is the one to save us. Now let's take a look at this. This is cool, okay? Let's see what you can re recognize on here and if you can even amplify it so you can label the appropriate names here. Okay, we, we see down here leading strand and lagging strand. We can explain why it's leading and lagging. Leading is because it's the three prime end and the five prime. Now, they have shown you no primer in this picture. Okay, no primer, but primers, I'm gonna show you that in just a minute. Just right now, there's no primer. The little green sphere right here is DNA polymerase. If you were going to fully define that, you would say it's DNA polymerase what? DNA polymerase three. It's the one that does the bulk of the replication. Because there's no primer on here, they're not showing you the primer, then you don't need, in this picture, you don't need DNA polymerase one. Are you with me on that? Okay. Now over here, you can see that we have a section here, it's replicated, a section here, and it's going back in a section here. 
So there are multiple sections there. This is still DNA polymerase three. Again, they're not showing you the primer yet in this picture. Because you have multiple sections of DNA that are ultimately going to need to get sealed together, that's why you need DNA what? Ligase, okay? Now, these are called these long, these 1,000 to 2,000 base pair strands of DNA on the lagging strand, these are called Okazaki fragments. Go ahead and say it. Okazaki fragments. Okazaki fragments. Okay. So now, take a look here. Let's level up. Oh, okay. Get your bearings. Okay. What they're showing you right here is this picture. And remember how I told you where you start in the DNA, okay, if I start at this point, if this is a leading strand up here top left, then here this direction would have to be the lagging. And over here, then if this is leading, this would be lagging and this would be leading. It, think of yourself at four corners in the middle of the road, right? If I'm standing in the middle of an intersection, two of the cars are coming towards me and two of the car lanes are going away from me. Do you agree with that? Okay. When I look and I stand in the middle of that intersection. So two are leading and two are lagging. You have two replication forks right here. So let's look to see what we have down here. Okay. So if we look right here, this, this that we're looking right here is helicase. Helicase is going to do the what? Unwind and unzip. Helicase. It's not showing you what in this picture? Topoisomerase. Okay, good. All right. Then what do we need to have? SSB is going to help hold the two strands apart. Okay. Now, keep in mind this started back over here somewhere, right? So you're seeing it continue to work down this replication fork, but it has already started over here. Okay. This is. This is where it started, but it's farther along over here, okay? Now, right here, you can see we have some primates right here. That would be RNA primase who's laying down some what? Primer, okay? And it is doing it multiple times here. It has to keep laying down that primer, but over here, way back here, it only had to do it once and it was done, and it's just cruising right along doesn't need to do it again and again. Right here we have DNA polymerase 3. That is working. The primer gets laid in red, okay? And then the primer was already laid down here. It's getting removed. It was laid down here. It was laid down here. This is the latest place that it's getting laid down. Yes? So is the primer like a, a placeholder? Until yes, it is like a placeholder. But what kind of, it, what it is needed is the DNA polymerase 3 needs something to work off of. It can only go in one direction, but it needs something to work off of. So that is what it's for. But because it has to keep starting so many times because it's facing the wrong direction, you need lots of primer. Got it. Okay. So here, DNA polymerase 3 is working off of that primer. And here it's already finished it. And so DNA polymerase 1 is right here. He's removing this red primer and replacing it with? with DNA, and then here you can't even tell, but here is that first section that was laid down, here is the second section. The primer's already been removed here, so now they're using ligase to seal the phosphate sugar backbone. Okay, now, are you getting it? Okay, be right here. Be right here. Topoisomerase, and then we're going to Unwind. If you want a word in there? It's supercoiling. Undoes the supercoiling. Topoisomerase. Then we do unzip. Oh, I didn't unwind. Unwind. Unzip. Helicase. Then SSP. And then the RNA primase lays down primer, 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 primer. Then we use DNA polymerase. So have DNA polymerase. Three, okay, and then off that primer we go, boom, 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 because we can just keep going along here, right? Boom, 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 and on this side, boom, 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 boom. Okay, so we're gonna pause there. Why are we pausing? To remember what? Multiple times. Here we go. Boom, 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 
boom, boom, boom, boom, boom. Then we need to use DNA polymerase one who removes the primer, Pri right? So we're gonna lay that so you can go primer, 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 because we have to keep removing it. Then we use ligase. Now, if I could, I would have another strand here, right? We just can't see it. So we use ligase, then these twist up. So can you imagine two arms twisted right here? And these form sister chromatids <laughs> held together by a centromere <laughs> that separate during anaphase. <laughs> ah, oh, put it all together. All right, here, yes. Yes, ligase is the tape, the chemical tape. Yes. So with the, with the DNA polymerase 3 and the DNA polymerase 1 be working kind of simultaneously? Yeah, they're all working on the same strand in different places. Okay, got it. Got Perfect. Okay, here we go. Okay. Let's undo our supercoiling with topoisomerase. Then we unwind and unzip, heat the case, and then SSP. Then we need to make an R. RNA primase lays down primer, 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 primer. Then we use DNA polymerase three, and we go boom, 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 boom. Then we need to use DNA polymerase one to remove the primer, 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 primer. Then we need to seal the phosphate sugar backbones with ligase, and then these twist up, and they form sister chromatids held together by the centromere, and they separate during anaphase. Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Now, let's take a look right here. Can you understand this picture? Do you want to try to explore it by yourself without me to see if you understand it? Try. Go ahead. Try. Wait, what? What? Wait, what? Wait, what? Oh, I forgot to say Okazaki fragments. <laughs> DNA, where do I do that? Boom, 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 boom. Okazaki fragments, that's where that goes. What are you asking me? What do you want her to ask me? What is the point? DNA polymerase 3 runs off the primer one time on the leading strand and then it repeats itself on the lagging strand. What? No, it is the guy who actually brings in the Okay, so let's go through so we make sure we understand what everything does. Okay, one more time through. Do you want to record this one? And we have to add in Okazaki fragments, and you're doing this with me. Yeah, and this lovely outfit. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, guys, we're, we'll go through it one more time. Oh, the part I forgot to add in there, remember how we go um, DNA polymerase 3, right? DNA polymerase 3, and we go boom, 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 and then we go boom, 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 boom. These are... Okazaki fragments. Okay, that was the part I forgot there. Okay, so you're gonna do it with me, yes? Yes. All right, you tell me when we go. Hi guys, this is called DNA replication. So this is gonna be our DNA. Start with supercoiling, and we're gonna use topo isomerase to relax the supercoiling. Then we're gonna unwind and unzip using helicase. Then we're gonna keep the two strands apart using what? SSD. Then we need to lay down primer because we have a leading strand and we have a lagging strand. And the leading strand is considered a leading strand because it's the three prime into the sugar, right? Whereas the lagging strand is the five prime. So we're going to use 
RNA primase and lay down primer one time on the leading strand and then primer, primer, primer on the lagging strand repetitively. Then we're going to use DNA polymerase 3, who's going to work off of the primer and go boom, 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 right down our leading strand, then boom, 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 and those are called Okazaki fragments. Then we need to get rid of that primer that's laid down, so we're gonna use DNA polymerase one. We only have one primer to remove here on our leading strand, so we go primer, then we go primer, primer, primer. Now we need to close the phosphate sugar backbone to seal it, so we're going to use ligase. Then these double-stranded DNA, and this is called semi-conservative replication because we have an old strand and a new strand. These are gonna twist up and form sister chromatids held together by a centromere, and they're gonna separate during anaphase. Yay! <laughs> Was that good? I tried to explain it while I went through. Yeah. All right. Wait, why, why would you take off the primer after you put it in? It's a placeholder. So it's a placeholder for the DNA polymerase 3 to work off. So shouldn't you take the primer off before you put the No, I'm using it. Oh, I'm using it. Okay, so come back to me. Come back to me. Here's helicase. You know what its job is. The, these are our SSB. Now keep in mind, this started back here somewhere, right? It's working its way towards the replication fork, right? Working its way towards the replication fork. So this started back here. Off the three prime end, DNA polymerase three, it's just zipping right along here. On the lagging strand, you had to have primer put down multiple times. Then the DNA polymerase three can work off of that primer. And then you have to remove the primer with DNA polymerase one. And then you seal it with ligase. Okay, so here are different enzymes that we can go through. Is there a place in the notes so we can get caught up on this, please? Let's go into introduction. Um, we're on unwinding, right? Topoisomerase, work on double-stranded DNA to deal with supercoiling, okay? To deal with supercoiling. And the DNA helicase separates the double strands and unzips, unwinds that DNA strandedness. SSB binds to the single-stranded DNA and prevents it from reforming. Is there more there? And then RNA primase, wherever I am on that, it synthesizes short RNA primers, about 10 base pairs long, so that the DNA polymerase can work off of the end of the primer. Then DNA polymerase three um, positions and joins free nucleotides to the template. On your notes, DNA polymerase three synthesizes DNA from the three prime end. On the leading strand, it continues, or it's continuous. On the lagging strand, it is discontinuous. They're called what? Okazaki fragments, 1,000, 2,000 base pairs. And DNA polymerase one is going to replace the RNA nucleotides with DNA nucleotides. Removes primer, I have put on there, removes primer and um, proofreads. Removes primers and proofreads in my notes. And then DNA ligase is going to seal any um, breaks in the phosphate sugar backbone. Seals the phosphate sugar backbone. And hydrogen bond holds the two strands together. If you want to snap that, that you can do that too. That's just yeah, the end. Snapchat it. <laughs> yeah, everybody wants that on their Snapchat. <laughs> okay, <laughs> continuing on. Take a look at this picture. Not it. Not it. Oh. Whoever is not it, pass or play. Your diagram to explain. Go ahead, quickly. <laughs> I'm not a 
And I encourage you as part of your as part of your study habits is just to pull up those pictures and go, can I understand them? As many different voices other than mine is really good because there, there are going to be different people writing the test, right? So look at those different pictures. See if you can understand them. Now remember, our, our chromosomes as eukaryotic cells, it's linear. Okay? And so you can see we're going to take off in several different sections here. And for um, bacterial DNA, they have circular chromosomes. So once they have their starting point, they just work their way around in that circle until they find each other again there. So on your prokaryotic versus eukaryotic replication, prokaryotic DNA replication, um, single circular chromosome, and it can be replicated in both directions in about 40 minutes. Origin of replication is a specific site where replication begins. Eukaryotic DNA replication initiated at several different sites. Yeah, and you have the replication bubble, and that replication bubble has a replication fork this way and a replication fork this way. Yes? How long does this take? Because it's in the F stage of MSA, right? So how long does yeah, it take? I, I think it depends on the species, you know, how long it's going to take. But Google it in a eukaryotic cell, okay? So the accuracy of replication, um, it, it's 99% accurate. To me, this is an amazing thing, how you get this so accurate. But this is how you do. Uh, a, you, the specificity of the base pairing, A and T and G and C, specificity of base pairing. You have mismatch repair, in which general repair enzymes fix incorrectly based nucleotides, and C, um, could oldest bio buddy tell you C? Go ahead, I gave you everything for that. Nucleotide repair. Ruthie, go away. Okay. While you're answering this question, okay. Is there an essay question on the structure of DNA? Yes. Is there an essay question on the replication of DNA? There is. Okay. Are you going to differentiate between leading and lagging strand? Yes. Initially, you could take your essay and say, this is what happens first, second, third, just like we went through in the song. And then split it out between your, once you lay down your primer, you need to differentiate between your leading and your lagging strand once you lay down your primer. Yes. Phosphate sugar backbone. Because you spliced out, remember, RNA has a different sugar, right? Phosphate's the same. But RNA has a different sugar, and in RNA you have the base uracil instead of thymine. So you're taking whole nucleotide sections out. You are cutting, guys, you're cutting that DNA out, a whole section. So there's a gap now, not holding those together. The hydrogen bonds will hold it kind of intact, but there's a gap there. So you need an enzyme to seal that gap between the phosphates and the sugar. That's going to be what lipase's job is. The hydrogen bonds will, those will form quick and easy. But sealing that backbone, those making that covalent bond between the sugar and the phosphates, that's why you need the ligase. Yes? Catch us on the, the, the cell cycle and stuff. Is this where it's like getting like replicated to fully die? Well, this stuff? is where you can have multiple yeah. copies of your DNA because you're getting mixed signals. Yeah, we haven't even talked about what initiated that other than, you know, in our last chapter in the cell cycle, right? And talking about cyclic. Okay, so unwinding requires that the hydrogen bonds have to unzip. Okay, so um, yeah, you, you would have to undo that at some point. You're not splitting the backbone. Backbone is intact, right? Backbone is intact that whole time.
visualizing your head is to help you understand the function but I mean you're not gonna have to create a picture in that sense okay. yeah you have to be able to explain it accurately so, like, I understand you need, like, a drawing and this is kind of yeah it would be hard to draw it. yeah uh, oh, okay. uh, guys I need you to not say the answers out loud because I need others in the classroom to be able to think it through Okay, stop for a minute. Shh. This is me holding you accountable. I know it's Halloween, okay? But I literally just gave this definition. I literally just gave it. And only 61% of you got it. Okay? You need a little fire here. Okay, this is important. I told you it was important. You shouldn't be missing this at this point because we have gone over it multiple times. And if you've done what you needed to do to be prepared for this class today, there should be quite a bit of review that went, went on here, not the first time me explaining it to you. So you should not be missing it at this point. Seals the brakes and the sugar phosphate boom. Sealing the brakes, that's chemical tape. It's always going to be like it. Always going to be like it. Watson and Crick came up with the idea of semi-conservative replication, but um, two gentlemen, Messelson and Stahl, actually came up with the experiment to support the hypothesis of semi-conservative replication. But because that is no longer as one of the hallmark experiments that you need to know, I took it out of the notes. I spliced it on out of the notes, but I didn't splice it out of this question. Yes? So when I was a person just like thinks about like yeah, they just put the hypothesis forward, but you, they couldn't actually do it. Okay, so um, so 
I'm just throwing that out there. Yeah. So if you see those words up there. So the old, when it means yeah. semi-conservative, it's saying that the old strand is serving as a template for the new strand. Mm -hmm. Meaning you know what series of bases to hook on there based on your original strand. It is serving as a template for the new strand. That's what makes it semi-conservative. Okay, then um, we are gonna start right here next time. So I'm gonna give the big pause and if you're eating Oh no, if it's late at night, then go ahead and have some toast. Make good choices.